Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to another session of Peripheral Interventions from Mount Sinai Hospital in New York City. Today, July 27th at 8.40 a.m., we are here for another interesting live case from our cat lab. Uh, we sincerely apologize for the delay in start due to some unforeseen technical issues, but we are live up and running. Uh, before, we, uh, before I send you over to the cat lab, just to give you uh, an update that from our June CCVVC symposium, all the cases and the presentation is now uploaded onto our website, cccsymposium.org. The, the videos and the lectures are available right there. If you have any questions regarding this case, you can live uh, feed us at info at peripheralinterventions.org, info at peripheralinterventions.org. We'll be more than happy to answer your questions live or even after the case. And just to uh, give you for our next session, we'll, uh, we'll go live again on August 24th at 8 a.m. So for uh, let's uh, take over to PK and let's go for another interesting case from the cath lab. Morning, PK. Hi, Vishal. How are you? I uh, want to welcome all, all of you guys um, who are, who are um, you know, watching from, from home. I apologize for, for, the, for the delay. I'm just looking here. So we had a little patient delay. Put it on abdomen, please. We had a little patient delay this morning. And uh, so therefore, by the time we got everything set up, it became much later for us to start. So, you know, we really, it's a pleasure today to have Dr. Ra uh, Dr. Rami Tadros, uh, who, is, who, is who is one of our professors here at, um, at uh, Mount Sinai Pro uh, of Vascular Surgery. I believe you're an associate professor, right? That's correct. Associate professor of Vascular Surgery. And he did, he did his training here at Sinai and has been on faculty here at Sinai for the last five to six years and, and has, has really been a tremendous asset. So we've got a, an incredible case here that we're doing, which is really going to demonstrate to all, all um, of you at home how really is the optimum way to manage these kind of difficult cases. And I don't want to steal too much of the thunder from this case here, but we're going to just do an a aortogram here live. And then, and then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead right into the presentation and let Dr. Tadros explain what, what his plan of action is going to be with this case. So can you put up the, uh, the history slide, please? Uh, so good morning, everybody. Uh, this is a 74-year-old female. Uh, she's got a history of hypertension, hyperlipidemia, diabetes, and coronary disease, as well as peripheral vascular disease. She previously has had claudication and has had stents in bilaterally in the um, SFAs. She's also had anterior tibial PTA in the past. Um, she subsequently um, has had uh, worsening symptoms uh, of claudication. Um, recently came in, her du duplex ultrasound reveals patent stents in the SFA. Uh, her ABIs post-exercise are 0.62 on the right and 0.68 on the left. Uh, so she's had significantly worsening ABIs. Um, a CT was obtained by Dr. Tadros, and you can go over the CT, Dr. Tadros. Yep. Sure. Uh, so a few important findings on a CT scan is that the infrarenal uh, aorta approximately measures around 16 millimeters. The stenosis narrows down to around six millimeters or so, which is equivalent to about a 60% stenosis. And when planning these cases, several uh, pieces of important information are the distance from the renal arteries <laughs> down to the aortic bifurcation. That's one important thing. Uh, the amount of calcification within the stenosis and your access vessel diameters and the common femoral artery diameters. In this patient, her external iliac arteries were measuring around six and a half millimeters, and her common iliac arteries, uh, the luminal size on the right was around eight millimeters, and on the left uh, was around seven millimeters. So when thinking about options for this case, we, we knew that a stent graft uh, would be an option given her access vessel diameters. And when choosing the type of approach, whether we do a cut down or percutaneous, her common femoral arteries were very normal uh, appearing with, without significant atherosclerotic plaque in the vessel. Um, if we can scroll down through some of these images, these are representative images. This is the aorta just below the level of the renals. Next image, please. This is the area of stenosis, and you can see significant uh, plaque and, and, and thrombus there. Next image. These are the the access vessels, okay, you can see the luminal diameter is slightly smaller on the left, uh, even though the vessel diameter is around 10 millimeters and, and better on the uh, right. Next image, please. And our external iliacs uh, were adequate 
for stent grafting. Next image, please. Uh, this is the common femoral artery on the right, and you, and you can see it's, it's uh, appropriate for percutaneous access. Uh, next image. Similar on the left, there's a small piece of plaque posteriorly, but otherwise reasonable vessel for percutaneous access. So Next. Next slide. Okay, Kay. so on the, the rest of it you're going to hear in, in, um, in um, actually, you go ahead, to talk about the plan. Yeah. Actually, before you talk about the plan, let's come off this, because I think we need, we, we need to show a couple of things here for the audience at home. So, 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 so the patient basically presented to me uh, is my patient who basically came in with intermittent claudication. So we did an ABI PVR, which were obviously abnormal. Excise ABIs were abnormal. We brought her in and did an, did, a, did an angiogram, and in the angiogram we found this. So you can show the angiographic uh, stenosis. So angiographically, when we did an aortogram, we, we found that she had you know, a renal artery stenosis that was moderate, and then, and then here she had a, a very, very tight distal aorta with, with, uh, with, uh, with bilateral common iliacs, like Dr. Tondros described, that were normal, as well as some external iliac uh, disease that was also normal. It was really not obstructive. So, so therefore, at this stage, it's very important from a cardiology point of view, unless you're well worse with stent grafts and other things, to really stop and have a conversation. I, th I think the most important thing here is, I mean, the initial you know, knee-jerk reflex will be, well, why can't I just put a balloon expandable stent um, in, into that distal aorta? But remember, this, these are not things that are done just by an angiogram. I mean, you need to have more imaging, you need to have more understanding, like Dr. Tadros just went over, about certain parameters that are very, very important for whatever the procedure that you choose to do. And then you need to have a multidisciplinary discussion, either with your radiologist, a vascular surgeon, and a cardiologist, or whatever the combination may be, to, re to really sit down and, and discuss this plan. So I want to just uh, throw it over to Dr. Tadros for a second and just talk about what, what, what are the options for this type of patient and in terms of percutaneous versus surgical. I know you're going to go over it, so just in brief. Sure. Um, so th in this patient, the endovascular options are, one, to put a large bare metal stent in the abdominal aorta and potentially extend down through the external, I'm sorry, down through the common iliacs. Uh, you could put a covered stent, such as an atrium, uh, in the abdominal aorta and post dilate it up to 12 millimeters. Uh, the disadvantage with that is the native aortic diameter here is 16 millimeters and 12 millimeters, although it would be enough to relieve her symptoms most likely, uh, may not be as good in terms of patency uh, given the limited luminal diameter. And with that, you could potentially extend covered stents down to the common iliacs. So putting an atrium in the aorta uh, and then bilateral common iliac atriums uh, to extend down and treat the, the inflow. Uh, surgical options include aortic endarterectomy, which is not typically done uh, at, at this stage. It, Aortobifemoral bypass is the preferred surgical approach uh, to treat this. And then the decision has to be made whether it's going to be an end-to-side versus an end-to-end -end, uh, type of configuration. Uh, in this patient where the, it's a, a, a mid-aortic problem, uh, mo uh, most likely would, would lean towards a end-to-end a uh, configuration here, but given that there's still patency of the hypogastrics, et cetera, uh, you wouldn't be faulted with doing a uh, end to side. Pull back. So, so, so n n now that now, can you also comment a little bit on the importance of imaging yeah. and, and why this is not an off the cuff kind of thing that you're going to do? Right. So, the CT angiogram is crucial here. You need to know that your axis Please. vessel diameters Please. are appropriate for, uh, for a stent Zero graft, which we're doing here. Zero uh, and the, and you want to be able to clear the renal arteries. You don't want to cover the renal arteries. So in this patient, looking at this angiogram with the marker uh, catheter in place, uh, you can see there, there's about almost eight centimeters from the renal, left renal artery down to the aortic bifurcation. We did uh, perform uh, a three-degree construction with center line imaging, which w uh, showed that it was around 7.8 centimeters from the renals down to the bifurcation. This is important when s selecting which device you're going to use. The Endologix device uh, can come as short as 60 millimeters, 70 millimeters, 100 millimeters, 120 millimeters. So the, the main body length is extremely important. We don't want to cover renal arteries and we want to 
land all the way down to the aortic bifurcation. So the question here is, can you go over the advantages and disadvantages of bare metal stenting, which is obviously reconstructing the bifurcation up into the aorta, right. number one. Number two, like a trouser SKS, what we call in the, in the coronaries, where, where you put a kissing, uh, where you put a covered stent in the aorta and two kissing stents into, the, into that covered stent. And three is, is the stent graft like we were planning on doing today. Right, so I think the biggest advantage to the stent graft, I'll start with the stent graft, <coughs> especially the endologic stent graft, is it's, it has a Y configuration and preserves the aortic bifurcation. And that allows subsequent re-intervention for infrainguinal disease if necessary. And it makes it easier to go up and over rather than having to go uh, ipsilateral on the side that you're intervening on. The, the disadvantage is it's more expensive, of course. The devices itself are, are more expensive. It's uh, off-label. It's off-label. These devices are approved for the use in aneurysms, not in occlusive disease. That said, there has been uh, studies performed looking at this, and the patency, at least in the short term, is very, very good, uh, over over 90%. Uh, the most recent study was published out of NYU and showed 90% plus patency at one year. Uh, although that's short, uh, we feel that the, the patency is likely to be better with this uh, configuration. With the bare metal stents, the disadvantage, the biggest disadvantage with bare metal stents is in these patients with calcified arteries, there, there's always a potential for perforation or rupture. The covered stent adds a level or layer of protection there with, with the, uh, w against perforation or rupture that the bare metal stents simply cannot do. And once the bare metal stent is in, that also limits your options in terms of covered stents. So uh, when you have a patient like this with severe calcific disease, uh, circumferential uh, stenosis, uh, that's a, a, a consideration that really needs to be taken very strongly and would, uh, a lot would cause me to lean towards stent grafting versus bare metal stent. Also with, with the self-expanding stents, the radial force is not as great, so getting full luminal expansion is sometimes difficult. Uh, you can overcome that with some of the balloon expandable uh, bare metal stents, but again, you have that same pitfall of uh, potential perforation. Uh, the covered stents are great, the biggest limitation with the atrium stent grafts is the fact that they're on label up to 10 millimeters, mm -hmm. off label up to 12 millimeters. Beyond 12 millimeters, it's difficult to predict how they behave. They behave. And you may not get a perfect seal. Correct. So now with, with the endologic stent graft, it actually will conform with very minimal guttering around the sides. Uh, it's, it's perfectly good for tight aortic bifurcations. And at the device we're going to use today is a 22 millimeter device in diameter, and we're placing it in a 16 millimeter proximal aorta. And we can then use a non-compliant balloon to balloon the, the, the middle of the, of the stent graft to get better luminal gain. Perfect. So, so I, while, while Dr. Tadros and I, well, I have decided to do an IVIS, and we're going to go over that. While we do the IVIS, I'm going to have Dr. Majid talk about the steps until what we got here. But I was remiss in, in introducing our team. So, so other than Dr. Tadros and myself, we have Dr. Farhan Majid, who's our new, our, who's our new endovascular fellow. Uh, uh, this year, from 2016 to 2017, we have Ray Loscano. We, ha we have Elizabeth. Uh, uh, we have uh, Danielle and Sarah. Sarah. Excuse me, Sarah's our nurse trainee who's here. And we have Damien, our, our, our new, new technician. And I'm sorry, Melissa. Fellow? Melissa, our, our uh, vascular, vascular surgeon, uh, for surgery fellow here as well. And we have Karthik, our, our interventional fellow. So we have a big team here for you. So in the meantime, while me and Dr. Tadros go over and do, do the IVIS, I'm going to have Dr. Majid just talk about what we did to get things started. Um, so we, have, uh, IVIS, Captain. Uh, we started with gaining access on uh, both sides. Let's go we live on the IVIS. So we have uh, introduced a, initially a um, eight French sheet and then um, oh, uh, we pre closed. Lost. Go ahead. Uh, and pre-closed um, uh, the right side um, and uh, also gained access on the left side and there's a seven French sheath on the left side with a pigtail catheter. Uh, we have uh, at this point introduced an IVIS uh, via the right uh, sheath and the IVIS is uh, going to go in here in a second. So, so the most important thing in, in that situation is actually the, the, the prep of the groin. As you saw when, when the, what Dr. Tadros said, you know, he, the CT measured the groin at, at, uh, at eight centimeters or nine centimeters, uh, you know, the, it was adequate for these large, large sheets to go into. 
So, 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 the bottom, so the bottom line is now at this stage, what we wanted to do is we wanted to pre-close to go ahead and, and get actual access into this vessel and be able to work on a 17 French sheath. So the same pre-close situation that we did with the BAV uh, is right? what we did. So what's going on with the IVIS guys? Do have another IVIS catheter, please? Do we have an IVIS or no? Yeah. yeah. Sorry, so we had some technical difficulty with the... Uh, it seems like we're snake bit today here. What, this is not the, this is a, this is a six French Ivis? Yes, sir. Okay. So now we're just going to go ahead with the Volcano Ivis in to go ahead and get these measurements. And flush this right in the back. What's your algorithm for sizing of the uh, endographs in relation to the vessel size? Like so you said. So, Michelle, uh, Dr. Tadros has a worksheet that I'm going to have oh, him go okay, over great. right after the Ivis. Okay. That's great. a great question. We're just going to go over the worksheet right after the Ivis. So, Important thing in these cases is also access management, as you see. Who is that? All right, let's go live on the IVIS, please. Can you show the IVIS? What happened with the IVIS? Can, can we anonymize the IVIS, please? So sorry, sorry about this technical stuff again. So, uh, so can you go to the slides so Dr. Tadros can go over that just for the sake of time? Okay, go ahead, Robin. All right. Um, the, so this is actually my, my initial uh, planning sheet. Um, it, there's actually a more formal planning sheet that can can uh, you can have it from Endologic itself. Um, the diameters of the sheets that are going to be used is 17 French on the right. Uh, we're actually going to be using the AFX2, which is a, a 7 French uh, introducer on the, on, the, on the left side. Uh, we talked about why we chose percutaneous access. The femorals were, were good. The smallest diameter main body for the uh, AFX device is 22 millimeters, and it comes in various lengths. Uh, because this approximately order was 16 millimeters, we chose the 22 millimeter uh, device. If the aorta was significantly smaller, I think that's where I would consider using an atrium. Uh, if it was significantly smaller, if you had, like, say, a 14 millimeter aorta or 12 millimeter aorta, an atrium is a good option uh, in, in that scenario. That said, this device has been used down to those small diameters uh, successfully. Uh, the concern there is it's a lot of metal and fabric, and so mm -hmm. you don't want to narrow the lumen. Mm -hmm. uh, with the device. So, so uh, you can see here that, uh, you know, the importance of the CT measurement. So we're just going to go ahead and do it in IVIS. And you can see the IVIS, show the IVIS screen, guys. We've anonymized it right now. So the IVIS screen is going to go live. And Dr. Tadros so will do a run, and then we'll describe it. So you right, so we're, go ahead. We're going, marching down. So you're coming from this, the super renal aorta here. So you can see so as it, Dr. Tadros is, is coming. This is the renal vein. And there it starts, wow. You're starting to see the narrowing here. And that's no, the, the narrowest portion of the aorta. And you can see the calcium dropout for the cardiologist at home. You know that you see the amount of calcium in these aortas, and it's so eccentric as you come. And here's your normal lumen and here. And this is where it starts to normalize again. I mean, normal, quote, unquote, normal, right? Correct. It's not really normal. All, All right. right. And now we're back into a sheet. OK. So, so now you've got the IVIS catheter. And now, now with, the, with the IVIS, you actually, what is the importance of doing IVIS in this? Do you recommend IVIS being done in these cases routinely, or do you think that's more for aneurysms and not so much for these kind of cases? Uh, I think if there's a question mark about the luminal diameter, mm -hmm. uh, then I think IVIS is useful. Uh, you can also use IVIS to measure gradients and other things. So it has some utility. I think the biggest utility is when treating patients with uh, aortic dissections. That said, the goal here is to try to stay luminal. And the other thing that you can confirm with IVIS is that we stayed within the true lumen mm -hmm. rather than go extra luminal. Uh, that's more of a concern with total occlusions than simple stenoses. Uh, I think for aortic applications, uh, dissections is really where the, uh, IVIS is most helpful. Perfect. So now we're ready to start the device, if I'm not wrong, Dr. Tadros. So yes. what I wanted to do was switch on this side and have you describe the device. Uh, can you swing the camera over, guys, and we can move out of your way? So you can go ahead and describe the device. So this is the, the AFX2 uh, endologic stent graft. The components are going to be this 
17 French sheath, which we're going to introduce into the right. This is the actual stent graft. Okay, the stent graft is actually within within this sheath here. It's a pants type uh, device, and so this is a a wire that actually gets snared from the opposite groin and gets pulled down. Once the de device is actually within the aorta, the contralateral limb will deploy and will subsequently be brought down onto the aortic bifurcation. A and that, that then allows us uh, to, to really get distal, we call it distal fixation. Here it's not as big of a problem because we're dealing with occlusive disease, but that's something that is talked about with the endologic device for uh, aneurysm applications. Um, once the device is deployed and we sit the device on the aortic bifurcation, there's actually, with this new version of the device, a, a yellow tab that is basically, um, uh, you're going to release the screw and, and pull the ripcord to actually deploy the main body of that graft. Again, this is a 70 millimeter length, so we should clear the renals without trouble. Once, once that, that's deployed, the, we, were, we will then deploy the contralateral gate or contralateral limb by pulling on this, this yellow tube. This will actually release the contralateral limb and the, this inner core wire will stay in place. Unlike the previous rendition of the device, this is actually an 035 wire, which is nice because then we can simply advance a pigtail over this. Uh, the old device, old system, was an 014 uh, wire, and you needed an extra wire to thread through that, and so it added a few steps, and then you had to switch out to an 035 system. Uh, so this actually saves time uh, here Beautiful. with this new, new system. Um, once the contralateral limb is deployed, we'll then finish the deployment of the ipsilateral iliac limb. After that, we'll balloon the uh, mid aorta to we can start off with 14 millimeters and see what things look like, and we'll use a non-compliant balloon uh, for that inflation and subsequently dilate up the iliac. Beautiful. So, so now well, while we get started, you know, you know, as you see, it's basically like a pair of pants with one one leg folded up. So you're basically gonna go, you're gonna go send it up um, in, in, in in through through one limb, and then in, into your say for for instance into your abdomen, and then you you're gonna unsheath the other limb. I got the wire. So that's basically what we're gonna do. You're gonna see it here. And by the way, the video is available. On YouTube, guys, am I right? Is it on YouTube, the video for the deployment? So the deployment video is on YouTube for those of you at home if you want to go ahead and see it. So that'll be also um, a, another visual af after you see this device being deployed. So you can see here that we're removing right now what, what looks like as the 8 front sheet. And so now we're going to go ahead with the 17 front sheet. So, so Ram Rami, one of our viewers just wants to know from a cardiologist's perspective, with the degree of calcification right there, pretty much circumferential, is there any role of doing a pre-dilatation or a pre-dilatation mm, yeah, with a balloon, question. or you just directly deploy the stent? Would there be any any difference in luminal gain or patency if you do a pre-dil? Is there any role? Mm -hmm. um, there's sometimes a role. Depends on whether you feel like you can get the device up safely across the area of narrowing or not. Get some, get the some concern I have with pre-dilating a lesion like this with mm -hmm. a lot of thrombus is that we may end up showering emboli. And that's something I want to avoid uh, in this patient. So you can see that it's, it's quite painful. We've sedated her quite well, but obviously it's a percutaneous approach, so it is going to be painful. Important thing is to actually keep the wire uh, you know, very, very taut. As you can see, the wire is very taut. Now, now Dr. Tadros has taken the, the, the deployment sheath up, up into the level of, of, the, of the aorta. It probably needs to go a little more north. Is that right, Rami, or are you happy with uh, it there? I think just above the bifurcation is fine. Just above the bifurcation of the, of the iliacs? Of the aorta. Of the aorta. Okay. Okay. That's fine. Okay. So now, now he's walking out in the inner luminal di uh, the dilator. I can work that out if you'd like. Okay. So, so we're going to walk that out together. He's fixi fixing the sheath. I'm fixing the wire and just continuously walking it out. Now, there's a tendency to bleed here. Is there? Not really, huh? You tightened it pretty good. Tighten the valve, yeah. Yeah. So I think there it's is a, a hemostatic valve. So there's a hemostatic valve, so you, you don't want to ex excessively bleed out. Now the important thing is we're going we're gonna to take the device. I'm going to have her come in the middle here, so this way I don't want to contaminate it in any way. Hold on. Yep. I got it. I got you get this wire? Yep, perfect. 
I'm going to bring the whole system this way. Mm -hmm. So this way, the length is also an issue yeah. here. So we're going to flip this side. Can you watch the cameras, guys? Watch this so it doesn't. Watch the cameras. This way, uh-huh. Mm -hmm. So we're going to load this in. Just going to pass this. And there's a little cheater on, on what we call as the, as the little fishing lure here. So the little cheater is very important because it's going to help us to get into the, uh, the, uh, the, the uh, stopcock, not the stopcock, the uh, diaphragm, much easier. And D Dr. Tadros will show you that cheater. So here comes the wire. So you can, we've got the Lundquist wire out. Now I'm just going to make sure nothing gets com contaminated. For the cardiologist, you know, if you're not doing aneurysms, th these are different styles of, 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 of devices and techniques with much longer sheets than even, even the peripheral stuff that we use. So you can a see. A few technical mm -hmm. points. There you go. Um, the device has to be uh, oriented so that the valves uh, lay medial. So here's okay. one valve here and one valve here. All right. Then this is a, a, a cheater. I think you can just hold this. Sure, bud. Yep. So this cheater here is going to allow us to then advance this inner core into this, through this valve here. So we don't want to advance the wire without the cheater because it will get damaged. Uh, right? Get damaged, yep. mm -hmm. Now you will have some bleeding when you introduce the cheater. So you can see here the amount of blood that's coming out there. So once we introduce, he will peel away the cheater. And you can see the cheater's out. I'm going to tighten the valve again. And tighten the valve. Beautiful. So the cheat, if you could show them the peel away of the cheater. It's very simple to take off. So this thing just gets just pulled off. That's it. Easy. Okay. So now, see here? Okay, There's so your wire. Let our wire is just, just in the order. We don't want to go any further than that because this perfect. wire can get uh, damaged. Uh, let's, let's get a, mm -hmm. any type of floppy wire. Give me a, 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 a VersaCore, guys. Or a, or a woolly let's wire. Let's get the uh, so right. snare up. Woolly wire. This is our snare. So we're going to use a, a floppy tip wire to, to, to take out the pigtail. And now Dr. Tadros is going to tell us about the snare that he uses to grab it. And I believe it comes with the kit, right? Uh, Endologix has a snare that they I provide. See. I see. You can, can use you, any can snare. You use any, you snare? Like. any snare you like. Okay. So there's your, your floppy tip wire in the aorta. Walking out my pigtail. So now we have got bilateral access, floppy wire on one side, and the actual deployment device on the other side. So this is a trilobe snare, is it? So it's a trilobe snare. And, uh, you know, cardiologists are pretty good at snaring because we snare a lot of stuff, too, that we lose in the, the thing. So it's, it's a similar type of snare that we use um, in, 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 in other applications in, the, in coronaries and PAD. So, so Vishal, any, any thoughts on, on this? I mean, I know you, you trained with Dr. Gray. Have you done these kind of, this device yourself? Well, you, we've used this uh, device before, and like Dr. Uh, Tadra said, I mean, it's the whole advantage of this device. Number one is the cloth is actually outside the stent graft material, while the rest of it is actually inside. And the fixation is both, the active fixation is at the ends, essentially. So the the cloth can actually i mean the stent graft can actually expand contract depending on the aortic va wall pressure so that's the compliance of this they graft the and the other thing is of course you maintain the bifurcation which is very essential especially for people who do uh, mm -hmm. peripheral interventions of the sfas iliacs and down below so that saves us the anatomy and the pain of getting the ipsilateral access so it's so a great device and it works uh, beautifully but I mean like I said we just have mm -hmm. to do the steps correctly and yep so you can see here that Dr. Tadros has the sheath of the snare in and what we're going to do is we're just going to wrap uh, the other wire and try to pull it down so right now we use a torquer to be able to torque the, the snare in the display order and and we're going to use the sheet to actually trap the, uh, the 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 snare once we grab it once we snare it so for the for, for those of you who can see you can see the 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 aspect that's to the left of the screen, or yeah, we're well, looking at the screen to the left of the there's the snare's coming out of the sheet, and now he's gonna torque it to try to capture this, this wire. And I guess you could manipulate the wire if you really needed to, right? But it probably looks pretty easy to grab. There I it think is. The, yeah, I mean, the easier other technique is you put the snare up first and wire it into it while you're introducing it, so that way you can right. just snare it out without right. trying to fish around. But there you go. Either way it works. Yeah, right there. So there's two different techniques. Oops, looks like an aortic wall there, huh? So you can see it's a large, large structure, obviously. 
and trying to, it's like uh, you're almost grabbing a needle in the haystack here. You can put it a little higher maybe, huh? There you go, you got there it. it Beautiful. So you can see the snare has been captured. I'm just going to send you this. Okay, the snare has been captured. Now he's going to externalize the snare by pulling it as a system. Okay. okay. Pika, I'm going to ask you to pull on this. Okay. I'm going to support the seven French sheath uh -huh. here in this groin. And at the same time, I'm going to see, I'm going to advance this through. Okay. So he's pushing, I'm pulling. Sort of the push-pull technique, right? Like, there you go. Just sending everything here. So here it comes. The snare is out of the body on this side, right? Nice. Looks good. Right? You see it now. It's out of the body. I don't know. Can you show the can groin, you guys? Yes. Can you show the groin? You're beautiful. I'm supporting that seven French sheath to avoid it coming out. So okay. you feed your wire from the under and at the same time try to pull it right yeah. and just yep. causing damage thing, to the arch. Exactly. Now, the thing that you want to avoid is Slack. you don't want to floss right. the aorta if you right. can avoid it. Well, that's part of the reason why you land the, the sheet short of the aorta, right? That's part of the reason right. why you're landing the sheet short of the aorta. This is good enough, right, Ron? Yeah, that's good enough. Yeah. So, so now, if you snare. look here, mm -hmm. once you've taken the laxity out of this uh, yellow tube, you can then begin the advancement of the stent graft. Can somebody pin the wire there? I yep. got it. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. And then we're going to still maintain tension on this. Oh, you see the tension. I got it. Yeah. See the level of tension I got, guys? Not only, not only. So you move both together as one system. Correct. So I'm going to loosen the valve a little bit to be able to get this device in. Now, important to remember, those of you assisting at home, as Dr. Tadros is advancing, I need to keep pulling that snare. See, there's, there's no laxity. You see that? So now I'm going to actually switch my arm over here. So this way I've got a hold of the 035 wire mm -hmm. as he's advancing. So the next thing, I'm, so once the, the, this is connected to the main sheath, I'm going to advance the inner core to push the stent graft up. So it's almost like the tension you feel is that you're helping him come up. See, I'm pulling on the, on the snare. You can see the sheath actually bending there. And I'm, I'm, I don't know if I'm pulling too much. And he'll smack me if I'm pulling too much. But it looks like right now I've got a, I've got a good, good level of pull here and no laxity. I'm looking up. Mm -hmm. Oops, the other way. Sorry. Yep. Ray, go a little low mag for me. I can't. Thank you. Okay. Is that too much tension around me on my part? No, you're good. Okay. I'm going to advance this a little bit more. There you go. You're embedding the sheet now. Okay. I think you're wrapped. It looks yeah, like you're wrapped. We are wrapped a little bit. Mm -hmm. yep. So what happens, guys, is that the snare wire, or the wire that we snared, wraps around the device. So now Dr. Tadros needs to clock to reduce the wrap. Okay, should I let go of my wire or no? There you go. See that? See how that snapped? All right. So now we're not wrapped anymore. And that's important to recognize for, the, for all of us at home. Uh, because you definitely don't want to de deploy oh, this yeah. wrap. Wire, 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 please. Push the wire up, please. Hold on. We lost a little wire. It's kind of we yeah. advanced that. Yep, that's good. Important because this is a large device, and you don't want to rupture the aorta while taking the device up. And don't worry, I'll beat Farhan later. <laughs> Pin that wire. <laughs> We have scheduled beatings here at Sinai. <laughs> so now you're just pushing the inner core all the way up after un unwrapping your uh, Correct. Wire. All right. OK. Perfect. So we just saw the. Still wrapped a little, right? A little bit. A little bit. There you go. So we just deployed that as the contralateral limb. So now we're going to actually bring this to sit on the, uh, on the aortic bifurcation bringing that right, I'm sorry, left iliac limb down into position. So remember, it's to the right of your screen. I'm still maintaining tension. Yeah. As Dr. Tadros is pulling down, I'm, I'm helping. I'm not pulling too hard. I'm just maintaining tension. See, that's the key. The key is to maintain that tension so it sits like a pair of pants. Okay. Excellent. So now, okay. so now that this, this is uh, in place, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, deploy the main body of this graft by releasing this yellow screw. And it's going to basically be a rip cord. Mm -hmm. it's good. Can you show his hands, guys? And I'm going to send it as he does it. And it should come with a red jacket. This actually is right. jacketing the um, device. 
Can we use something, a valve or some valve cover? So the other important thing to remember is, and a question I can actually hear, like a lot of cardiologists thinking this, how do you know that you're below the renals right now? Uh, good planning. Uh, one, we, we actually measured the, we did a aortogram with a marker catheter before advancing the device. Uh, we counted down from the renal approximately eight centimeters. And I know the main body of this device is around seven centimeters. And there's some um, flexibility there. And, so, and the device will shorten a little bit. When you balloon it? When you balloon it, a couple millimeters. Great. Um, so I um, feel pretty confident that we're at least a centimeter below the renals. Perfect. So that's a very important point. So now, now I'm still holding uh, attention here. Now, okay. now so you're going to walk through what you need to know. Yeah. So now what we're going to do uh -huh. is we're going to actually release the contralateral limb. That's simply done by pulling on the yellow right. tube. Mm -hmm. And I'm actually putting, supporting the seven French sheath. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. You're bleeding a little on that side, but that's okay. Beautiful. Ray's just getting heading over there to give us an ACT. So you know what? You're tied over here, Rami. That's the reason. The snare is still tied. There you go. Now it should X-ray real quick? Huh? X-ray? I'm going to make sure this thing doesn't come down too much. We're okay. Okay. Do me a favor. Come over here and just hold this so it doesn't come out. So now you just unsheathed the contralateral by just pulling the sleeve. But mm -hmm. the wire still stays in, the 035 wire on the, on the contralateral side. Got a lot of tension or what? There you go. Perfect. So the so 035 wire, so now we're going to put a pigtail up. Is it, you want to get a pigtail up yeah. now? Yep, let's get a pigtail. Ray, can you clean this up a little bit? See, so part of the reason is if you hate messy tables, this is going to be a main problem. So this is, we get a lot of stuff on the table. So now we're getting the pigtail up. And this actually, this pigtail is going to help release the, uh, this wire from the actual graft itself. The reason that the graft was coming down was we, we had, that snare was still attached to that wire, so. But it didn't cause any harm here. No, no, we're fine. Okay. And we're giving Danielle, our uh, endologics rep, a bit of a heart attack, but that's okay. So <laughs> is this an angled pigtail or a straight tip pigtail? I mean, the straight, straight bend. This so is a standard pigtail. Standard. So it's funny, you know, when your fellow's older than you, <laughs> you, 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 you actually <laughs> wonder what, what, what's oh happening when, when you, when you send, give him the pigtail, because I can't see anymore. Oh, so my Lord. It's, really? it's, a, it's actually an advantage. See, I told you. Not older. All right, Ray, you're going to have to do it. Or maybe Rami, who's the youngest out of all of us, <laughs> will do it. I got Yeah. All right. All right See? Right. Happens, guys, to all of you out there. Eyesight's the first to go. You start thinking you're better looking as you get older because you can't see yourself. <laughs> <laughs> so, Rami, are, th are there any other stent grafts that, that we can use uh, for this kind of situation? I mean, is it, is, is it, could you use a gore? Could you use other stent grafts? Or, or, I, mean, I, I mean, obviously the advantage of this is the fact that you can still you preserve a bifurcation. Yeah. It's probably a smaller French system, I'm assuming, in order to get over. And it's also, you know, quite user-friendly to deploy. So tell me about in terms of other, other devices that, that, that we could use. Um, you could use any of the devices. The problem is the aortic bifurcation. If you have a tight aortic bifurcation, uh, there's always a risk of limb thrombosis uh, with those devices. Because those okay. devices I got it, bud. Mm -hmm. with, yep. with that have modular components are not created to basically treat patients with tight aortic bifurcations. Uh, while this device actually, yeah, it's a little tight. I'm gonna let you hear. Somebody pin that wire? Mm -hmm. I got it. Just gonna need to pull, probably push the wire, there you go. But I just push the device forward again to be able to release it. Mm -hmm. There it goes. There it goes. All right, beautiful. So now we got the wire up. So all the pigtail does is essentially transmits your force and detaches it and or snaps it open so that it can be completely deployed. Correct, correct. Let me prep that as you start doing your work here. So I'm going to prep the pigtail for Dr. Tadros here as we start doing our work for the sake of time. I know you, we, go, we only have one hour here. So... So, so he's walking back. Can you fix the pigtail, Chief? On the other side, put your hand on the other side. Thank you. Uh -huh. 
don't pick up push. now. Need a wire? Might need a wire. Okay. Just, just okay. pin this here so it doesn't come down any further. Maybe once we get this device out, it probably mm -hmm. will uh, be okay. So you can see he's walking out the actual deployment sheath. Uh, my other fellow is fixing, Dr. Karthik is fixing the the um, the sheath on the groin so it does not come out. So you're pulling the inner core back? Yes. Okay. Correct. You actually will hit a stop. Okay. Which we just did. So now I'm actually going to release. Yeah. It's over there. Pin mm -hmm. this here. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Okay. Now, now you get the click, right? Now we click this and release it. Mm hmm. Should change this back. You want me to do it? Got it. Here we go. Right. I'm pulling. Very Move tight. Two, three, two. Yeah. Well, let's look further down. Yeah, it's really tight. So, uh, as you can see, it's very tight at the level of the distal sheath. If I just brought my sheath down. There you go. Much easier. Out, all yep. the way? All the way. Mm -hmm. Okay. Perfect. So I'm going to retighten that valve. Don't pull anything. Yeah. Okay. And we're going to check our distal wire to make sure our wire is good. Perfect. Yeah. That's good. Everything is really good. Bring it back a little bit. Excellent. Perfect. All right. So and the pigtail also went up, so we don't need to do here. anything. Let me mag up for you. Hold this here. Okay. Mm -hmm. You want to take a picture to show them at home? Yeah. How it looks? All right, we're going to take a, a DSA picture just to show you how the undeployed or, or the unballooned device looks. It is deployed, but how the unballooned device looks. Go ahead. Okay. So you guys see that? It looks beautiful. So we may need to put a cuff in. So we might need to put a cuff in up top, but that's okay. So at least we can see it here how we are. Yeah. Okay. We may not. Let's see. Uh, let's cycle through it again. Mm -hmm. So one of the things you're looking for is whether you have a proximal seal seal, but this is not an aneurysm. Right. This is stenosis. So right. I don't know whether we would need to unless it looks like crap. We'll figure it out. Yeah. Or if there's a remaining and gradient. This is where maybe IVIS might be helpful. So we let's can do balloon an IVIS. this. Let's balloon it first, and then I think we'll mm -hmm. eye this. Got it. What All size? Right, let's get that 14 millimeter balloon. 14 millimeter balloon, guys. Mm -hmm. 1420. We bought one of those in the we room? We bought a 20. Remember the barred balloon release I bought? It's outside. Okay. So, so again, you want to use a semi-compliant balloon, um, and uh, so it's a barred balloon that we're using. You can use any 14 millimeter balloon, to, and we're going to go ahead and, uh, and deploy it here. So also for, for everybody watching, what's going to happen is Dr. Tondros, when he's done here, is kind enough to prepare a lecture on management of, uh, of aortic disease. It's a, it's a short lecture uh, where he's gone mm -hmm. over a lot of his cases that he's performed with different products. So everything that he talked about, he talked about, okay. you know, obviously covered stents, self-expanding stents, uh, aortic stent grafts, all these things. So he's actually, he's actually going to speak on each one and, and put together a presentation. Obviously, data-wise, I mean, it's not going to be the, the, a lot of random data at all. As we know, in the PAD side, where our data is not exhaustive. So it's more of an experience and his approach uh, to actually manage these cases. Okay. So, uh, let me just get the balloon up there, and then we decide. So you can see the balloon is going up now. So he's using the same introducer sheet that he did to deploy the device. And, and you can see the balloon will go up. There is the balloon. And it's inside the body of the graph now. It's now to the proximal end. Hold on, Rob. I'm going to put it on corners so you can see better. Yeah. So this is cat now. So uh, obviously the radiation will be more, but at least we can see better. There it is. Yep. Yep. You're, you're pulling it back. You see that? Yeah. Okay. That's good there. Okay. So we're going to go up here. So you diluted the contrast, boys? 
Yeah, you're going to need more contrast. And this is a 14 millimeter balloon. I mean, there's, there's a question yeah, from one that. of our viewers just saying, is, what's, uh, uh, is there any limitation of this graph when there's uh, severe tortuosity at the distal aorta, Come right? Forth. You know how sometimes it's very tortuous it's nominal or angulated? Uh, well, nominal? Oh, no. it, it should actually navigate tortuosity pretty well. One of the things that you can do if you're doing counter significant tortuosity or plaque bifurcation is you can actually take the delivery sheath and start with the delivery sheath up higher and right. then exchange the sheath back once, you, uh, once, once you're, uh, you're happy with the position two. of the graph. That's two, Rami. Okay. I'm going up very, very slowly, guys. I'm only at two. Nominal is six. So that's, now Rami, why did you choose to uh, balloon the mid graph rather than the proximal graft? That's four. We're going to uh, balloon both. Right, but why did you start here? Um, it's the area of titus stenosis. Yep. I think mm -hmm. it's, I think the divide, the graft. You want graft me to go to nominal? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, five. And, and do you watch for the similar things, pain, uh, hypotension, all those things? Yeah, absolutely. As you can see, diluting means they really diluted. We really can't see anything, <laughs> but that's okay. So that's six. I'm going to re-advance this here. Mm -hmm. There we go. So uh, just in case for the viewers, keeping in mind the stenosis and the calcification, let's say hypothetically you were not able to cross your uh, device once your sheath is in place. What would you be in your next step? Let's say we have difficulty going in and you're scared that you might, you know, cause more injury to the vessel. Yeah, I think that what one, would be uh, next you have step? several options. Uh, one option which is just simply take a non-compliant angioplasty balloon. Uh, you can start with six or seven millimeters and balloon the track that the device is going to go up. I know. I know she would. Uh, you can also use dilators and sequentially dilate up. That's another option. Uh, if you have very, if you have heavily calcific uh, stenosis within the common or external iliac, you can uh, preemptively place covered stents in the access to facilitate delivery uh, of, the, uh, of the actual stent graft. So I'm going up here as well. So we're doing three balloon angioplasties of the, um, of the um, uh, vessel. So you can see here, each time I'm going up very, very slowly. I'm only at two here, now I'm at four, and now I'm at six. And she is having a little bit of abdominal discomfort, which we would anticipate that she would do because of the fact that we have uh, a, a uh, you know, dilating the aorta. Yeah. And you can see the recoil does occur, even with yeah. the stent graft. Let's go ahead and do an uh, angiogram. Sure. DSA, guys. Is that having is it a lot of pain or a little bit of pain? A little bit. Okay. That's a tiny bit. Let go. go ahead. I would say uh, that's a hell of a lot better than it looked before. Yes. It is. So... You know, so Rami, one of the things I wanted to ask you is, you know, when do you decide that you're going to balloon more? When do you not? Do you use gradients? Do you use uh, IVIS? Do you look for infolding? I think IVIS is, IVIS is a very good way to do it. Some of it's visual on the, uh, when looking at this. We, need, we still need to balloon the Prox. iliacs. Mm -hmm. um, part of it's visual. So comparing the new luminal uh, gain com compared to the uh, more proximal aorta, which is mm -hmm. more of a normal size. Mm -hmm. uh, IVIS is a very good tool for that. You can get a better, much better sense of the actual lumen. So I think in this situation where we're not sure whether we want to extend a bit more proximal, it looks good visually, I would confirm with IVIS here. Okay, and we also have gradients. We have two transducers. It's yeah. a physiologic disease we're treating, not a you know, aneurysm, life-threatening kind of disease. Correct. So therefore, if we obl obliterate the gradient between the aorta and the common femoral, I think we're done. So, yeah. so, so what we'll do is right now we want to balloon the iliacs and then do the IVIS? Uh, yeah. Okay, so what size balloon? You want eights and iliacs let's or nines? Do, let's do eights. Give me an 80-20 balloon, it. guys. So I'm going to walk back this balloon. Okay. I'm going to walk back the balloon. Okay. Okay. Balloon's coming back. Come over here. Switch for you. Yeah. A lot of tension on this balloon here. It's coming back. Good. So we're going to get an 80-20. Precautious point, the gradients... Uh, it's a very important thing to look at. So I didn't, I didn't comment on that, Rami. We did have dual transducers. The gradient was 70 millimeters between the aorta and the common femoral when we started. So that was just a resting gradient. 
So as you guys can imagine what, what it will be, flush the center lumen, please. You, you can imagine what, what, what it will be um, if, you, if the patient was excising. It's obviously going to be a lot worse. So the, the patient is a very, very symptomatic patient. And, uh, you know, this is one of those things where to, to spend this, this, this amount of money, as well as beyond that, really, uh, you know, take the, the risk for the patient or the procedure, exposure to dye, et cetera, et cetera, you clearly want to have a good indication. And sure. that's where I, I'm sure, I'm sorry. And that's where I think the multidisciplinary effort is really going to help you as well. You know, sorry, Rami. There okay. you go. So the multidisciplinary effort, because you know you, you get two so two sets of eyes looking at the lesion, you get two sets of uh, ears and uh, physical exam skills, actually deciding on whether this patient should be treated or not, which is excellent as well. Are you way up, or you, did you cross it? No, right, no, not right. yet. Yeah, it's such a long sheet. Wire still pen? So, yep. Mm -hmm. There it is. So there it goes now. So we're just going to now start ballooning the iliacs. What's nominal, guys? Do kissing. You want to do kiss? Get me another one, please. Let's have a uh, wire. Go for it. Get us another. another I just want to make sure that the, the actual bifurcation is wide oh, open. Super core, guys. So we'll do kissing balloons. If you start up in the aorta, work our way down. Just make sure we get everything wide That's open. That's the wrong end here. There it is. That's the right end. So now we're going to lose our pigtail position, and we're going to go with uh, two kissing balloons. So as you can see, it can relatively be done quickly. You know, you know, we, we you know, we did a lot of yap in here, but but if you if you look at it, I mean, our, our ability to get this case done was was not that bad. But I can tell you, the pre-planning of this case was a lot more than act the actual case itself. I got it wrong. Yep. It's all in the planning. There you go. Got it. Eight, eight, what? You don't have another eight. How about a Dorado? Do you have a, a, a do you have a Dorado? Or can you go to Barry's room and see if he has a a Cordis eight eight twenty? So again, well, we're just going to go get the, the balloon there. So, so after we balloon, uh, the idea is going to IVIS, that then we're going to check up uh, pressure gradients. And if we have no pressure gradients, I think we'll call it a day, right? And we'll just, we'll just okay. close, close it up. So we got the, here we have the uh, Dorado balloon, which is a non-compliant balloon. Um, yep, that's fine. But we'll just, we'll just go up slow. So let me ask you this. What is your point of no return once you're deploying this tent? Before you pull the, can you... Uh, resheath the main body when you pull it back, or it's just that's where it ends. Let's say you're not satisfied with the position and you want to pull the whole thing down. Is there a uh, what's your point of no return? We got it, Liz. I think the point of no return is probably going to be when that contralateral limb. Can you get him a pair of scissors, deployed. please? Then it's it's going to be very difficult to manage uh, getting that device out. There you go. You got it. Mm -hmm. Go. Mm -hmm. Let me get this. Yeah. Pair of scissors, guys. There's the, the 8 -O balloons, for those of you who use Dorado balloons, they actually put this sort of uh, super glue on their, uh, on their uh, little label. It's almost impossible to cut off. They're very proud of their product. So they will not allow you to get rid of it. You got it? Yeah. Great. So I'm going to attach the balloons now. Okay. Ready? Make sure the Let's go kissing. Are we overlap? Yep, we're good. Ready, Farhan? Mm -hmm. What's the nominal of my Dorado balloon, guys? That's my Dorado going up. Six? Six. Okay. Both are six. Dorado's eight. Okay, I'm just going to go to six, six. Get it to profile. That's six. Yep, that's six here. That's eight, actually. Good. Okay. okay. Wonderful. Down together? Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to walk this back to the distal, right, a little bit? Yeah. Okay, right about there. Okay, yep, agree. And then right about yep, there. there. Good. Okay, good. Let's go up again. So I am at six. Six. Liz, any pain? Okay, down together. Walking you back first for Han. Okay, go up right there. I'm gonna walk my. Oh, I'm actually okay, maybe a little bit. You don't have to kiss now. You can just go up okay. slowly. Four, six. Yep, six. Beautiful. Okay. Let's do one more, just down. One more together, up top. Yeah. Okay. I just know that 
There's still a little bit of. <laughs> I'm fixing you this wire. Yeah. Wires or pins? Yep. Right here. I just want to get mm -hmm. this area one Both more. Both wires are pinned. Don't worry. Oop, the wire's coming back. No big deal. Okay. Let me push the wire up. Okay, good. Uh, go up now. That's good right Perfect. there. Perfect. Now we're going to go. Take up to eight or nine. Eight or nine, guys. Ten. Together. What are you at? Eight. Eight. Ten. 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 That's ten each. Any pain? Any pain, Liz? That's good. No. Nope. Yes, down. So I guess you're looking for the stretch of the aorta to say that you're really kind of opening it up really good. Yeah, I just want to make sure it's all opened up. There's no Walk it up. Compromise. Yep. Walk yeah. that out. I'm walking this one out first. Okay, let's get the pigtail ready, guys, for that side. Do one last run. Uh -huh. And then we'll check gradients. Lundquist came back a little bit. Okay, just mm -hmm. check the position of the Lundquist. Yep. Oh, in the renal. That's a super course. I don't think going to happen. Lundquist in the renal is not a good thing. There you go. All right. So, again, you see the value of using softer wires here. You know, use the super core wire. You, the one in the renal, we don't have a, we're not worried about it. So we're going to put the, peak, the pigtail. I'm going to put the pigtail in the Lundquist here uh, just so it's easier for me to load it. And then... Uh, Right. So now, once we're done, Vishal, what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and do the, 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 the pre-close, and then we'll be done with it. And then the case will be done. The patient should be able to go home tomorrow, I hope. Oh, uh, right, Rami? Yeah. Should be able to go home tomorrow and with complete relief of her symptoms. So as far as follow-up on this case, Rami, in terms of ultrasound for the people at home, uh, do you do a baseline post-discharge immediately to get velocities, or... Or how do you do it? Because obviously the patencies are not very clear here. We don't know exactly what the patencies are. Yeah. I think a post, um, post-procedural duplex is useful to get a baseline. Mm -hmm. Take and the wire out, guys. you can follow from there. Uh, so you can also follow with CTA, but although it's mm -hmm. sometimes a little bit uh, difficult to yeah, tell uh, luminal diameters when, when there's calcification and metal and, and, and that. But So duplex is always a good option. Can somebody grab the wire from Dr. Tadros? Yeah, I got it. I got it. Mm -hmm. And it's non-invasive, of course. Right. So what we normally do is we get, we get our, our baseline velocities with Dr. Olin's lab, and then, and then we decide. Let's put me on DSA abdomen, guys. So, so far, dye-wise, we've actually used 40 cc's of dye. So you can actually do this with very less dye, but this is going to be a bigger injection. I'm giving 20 on this injection just so we can really see it. I'm going to do a prolonged injection as well. Senora, no, um, re respira profundo. Bote del aire. Bote del aire, aguanta la respiración, aguanta, aguanta, no trague. Oh, she can swallow, but we don't want her to. So the key here is you need to watch, obviously from my perspective, I'm looking at the renal. Muy bien, señora. So, so, there's, so there's nothing going on in that renal where that wire went in. And then obviously the rest, Dr. Tadros is going to comment on. Yeah. I'm also doing the same thing, just making sure there's not. Then the renal, out. right? <laughs> um, so everything looks good angiographically. Uh, we'll measure the ingredients and do the ivus. So, oh, so, so, it's the, so let's get a third ivus, guys. So the uh, volcano is actually making a profit on this case. What happened with it? <laughs> Somebody leaned on the ivus. So, <laughs> so you don't have an ivus? So, so, so we're, we're really? out of ivises. So we're going to have to run and get an ivis from the OR. So uh, what, what we're going to have to do. Actually, it's working again. It's working. It's working. All yep. Right. All right. So the stock just went down two points. Dr. Tadros, you're not very helpful for the <laughs> stockholders. <laughs> I don't own any stock in any of these companies. So. <laughs> I'm, I'm just I'm kidding. Not, <laughs> you're not, you're not, you're not, you're not a stockholder. You're not a stockholder here. Stockholder. All right. So I actually, uh, there you go. So we're going to, when we did this with the ACC, we had to really be serious. Yeah. So all that uh, other stuff, we had to stop. So now we're not with the ACC anymore, so we can have some fun. <laughs> all right, uh-oh, catheter fault detected. Hold on. So anyway, so for the sake of time, what I'm going to do here is I, I'm, I'm going to go ahead while we go and get another IVUS from the OR, since this is not working, but we're going to accept this as our final result. The, we'll check a gradient. That's one thing I can do. So let's. Oh, good. Let's see. 
I don't see any it image though. It says plug in. You know, no, it's not. It's not plugged in. Yeah. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and just check gradients and do a physiological assessment of our result. So I'm going to have Dr. Tadros connect this to the uh, to the seven French sheath on the on the left groin, and then we'll be able to get huh? Retry? It's not going to work. So we're going to just attach to that and just open it for me, and I'll, I'll flush it myself. Just open it to me. Uh -huh. No, the other way. I'm sorry. Yep. I'll just pull back. I'm just de-airing it here. Wonderful. Okay, flushed. So now we're going to do our gradient. And there you go, guys. There's your gradient. Go show the gradient, please. So you saw you had a 60 or oh, 70 millimeter gradient before. Now, unless the Ivers shows something that Dr. Tadros, I'm going to ask him that question, what are the reasons he'd go back and, and balloon with the, with the resolved gradient? Uh, the gradient is completely resolved in the left leg, and there was a gradient in the left leg when we started. We'll check again on the right leg, but I'm assuming there's going to be no issues. And I'm assuming the flow of normality you see on that right external iliac is because the sheath is occlusive. Right. Mm -hmm. so, so therefore, now, Dr. Tartaros, now that you have a resolved gradient, what would you do in terms of what would make you add a cuff? What would make you uh, do further ballooning? So I think that if I was still concerned about a narrowing uh, proximal to that stent graft, I would, I would consider uh, placing a cuff. Uh, if I was concerned about perforation or an arterial injury, I'd certainly want to go up to the renals and place a cuff. Uh, those are some of the things that I would, I would, I would consider. Okay. Yeah. So I guess, I guess then, then I, we're going we're gonna to call it because our hour is just about up now. Yeah. So what, what we'll do is, I mean, I think we've got a great result. Um, we, I think most of you at home know how to use pre-closes in terms of how to close this up. What we're going to do in, in is go ahead and, and do, do, do the IVIS, the Lundquist. Or, or the super core. Give them the super core on this side. So what we're going to do is we're going to check a gradient on the right side, make sure there's no iliac dissection on the right side. We're going to do completion runoff angiograms of the lower extremity, make sure we didn't embolize. The main reason we did the stent graft was, was so that we would not send any crud down and, and cause any problems. Now, people could say, well, you didn't do an angiogram before. Well, we have a CTA, and we have a diagnostic angiogram from our lab the, the last time we did it. So we do have a lot of, uh, you know, uh, how can you say, information to, to really let us know What's, uh, what, what, what the pre-runoff was, uh, so this way we can have a comparative runoff. So therefore, at this stage, I mean, I want to thank Dr. Tadros. I want to thank his team, uh, our vascular surgery fellow as well, for really taking their morning to come out and spend it with us. I want to thank uh, uh, the, the people from Endologics. Thank you very much, guys, for coming and supporting the case. And uh, obviously, my entire team, Elizabeth uh, and, uh, and Damien, and uh, obviously our fellows. So, Vishal, any closing comments? I think we're going to sign off here. And uh, Dr. Tadros is going to come there once, once, once he's okay here. He's going to come there in a few minutes to go ahead and give the lecture. Okay. All right. Thank you, PK. An excellent, excellent case. Thank you, Dr. Tadros and the team. Uh, a great presentation of using an endograft in a patient. Usually, I'm sure you've seen a lot of AAAs, but this is an aortic stenosis. Uh, beneficial to the patient. Uh, any questions, you can email us at info at peripheralinterventions.org. Uh, this case will be put up live on the website by the end of the week at peripheralinterventions.org. Uh, you can go into the archive section and see all our previous cases from uh, the last month and years and on. Uh, our next live broadcast will be on August 24th at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. We would love for you to join us then again for another interesting case from Mount Sinai Cath Lab. Till then, have a great week and the rest of the month.